And so we've got Anthony Ryder from South Lyon, Michigan, recently selected as the Lions 2020 Fan of the Year. He has a passion about sports broadcasting. With the 112th selection in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Detroit Lions select Amon Ross St. Brown, wide receiver, USC. One cry, baby! going on everybody welcome back to another detroit lions video now the detroit lions have completed their preseason right they have played three games and looked pretty good doing it going two and one with wins versus the new york giants as well as the carolina panthers the detroit lions are just a week and a half away from playing Kansas City in Arrowhead on Thursday night football to open the 2023 NFL season. But before they get to that, they have quite a few big decisions to make. And of course, in between now and Kansas City, the Detroit Lions have to cut 37 players to cut this roster from 90 all the way down to 53. Now, of course, they're going to have the 16-man the practice squad as well. But in order to do that, they do have to cut players from the active roster first. So the Lions are going to have to cut quite a few talented players and quite a few playmakers from this year's preseason. And one of the biggest things and one of the biggest battles to watch for is going to be Connor Galvin, the rookie undrafted free agent from the University of Baylor, versus Matt Nelson, the veteran offensive tackle that has been with the Detroit Lions since day one of this regime and is currently looking to hold his job as the third offensive tackle on the roster. Both of them had an up and down preseason. Both of them made some very good plays, and both of them had a couple plays where they showed why they are the backup offensive tackles. But I think both of them do have a case to make this roster, and there is a chance that both of them end up doing so. However, there is also a chance that the Detroit Lions only want to carry a few backup offensive linemen with their depth and versatility along the line. There is a chance that one of them is going to get cut or tried to stash on the practice squad. So with that being said, let's take a look at the battle that they had in Carolina. Take a look at the two different players and how they played versus the Carolina Panthers, a starting defense that did actually throw a lot of good players at them. And look at what they did in week three of the preseason. So first, we're going to start off with Matt Nelson, a player that started the game for the Detroit Lions, played an entire half, and actually, for the most part, looked pretty good doing it. So let's start off with some pass rush reps. So let's start off with some pass protection, right? Matt Nelson is going to be the starting left tackle here at the very top of the screen. And of course, this is not the very beginning of the game, but this is versus a starting pass rusher, right? This is versus not Brian Burns, but the starting pass rushers alongside Brian Burns. And Matt Nelson is just going to do a very good job kind of keeping the offensive tackle away, setting his base, having clean protection, and not allowing him to get anywhere near Teddy Bridgewater. This time, second quarter at the bottom of the screen. Again, just ability to set his base versus Yuter Gross Montos, a former second-round pick from Penn State, and he's able to keep the pocket very clean for Teddy Bridgewater to get the ball out to Jason Cabinda. Again, right here at the bottom of the screen, Matt Nelson is going to get his hands on the pass rusher. He's going to be able to hold him at bay right? That is Matt Nelson's game. Matt Nelson has a good amount of strength. And if he can get his hands on you, you probably aren't going anywhere too fast, right? There are very few times where Matt Nelson's in a good position and gets his hand on a player and that player is able to power his way through. But where Matt Nelson does struggle is going to be the speed rushers, right? It's going to be the bendy guys around the edge, the quick, versatile players, the outside linebackers, the James Houston's, the you know, it didn't play this game, but the Brian Burns is guys that focus more on speed and finesse than power is really where Matt Nelson begins to struggle. Now, right here, again, it's not a crazy play, but he is able to, you know, kind of start off here with the block, kind of double teaming, sees the blitz and cornerback is able to get off and is able to make the play so Teddy can get the football away. Matt Nelson did not play a bad game versus the Carolina Panthers, but he did show some inconsistencies right here. You know, a good spin move by Yatur Gross Montos, but a really but a really good recovery by Matt Nelson is able to keep him, even push him inside a little bit and give Teddy Bridgewater the opportunity to unload this deep shot to Chase Coda. Doesn't quite end up working out, but is a good rep. One more right here. Again, just kind of sets his base, gets his hand on the guy, and of course allows the big play from Antoine Green, the seventh round selection from North Carolina. Now 
Matt Nelson, again, is not a bad football player. Matt Nelson is a very good offensive lineman and has started games for the Detroit Lions in the past, but Matt Nelson is far from perfect. He had a couple bad reps, including, I would say this one right here, not an ideal rep for Matt Nelson, right? He kind of starts off the rep fairly good, right? He starts off the rep, I think, in a very good position, right? This is a position you would expect your offensive tackle to win. The, uh, the defensive lineman kind of works his way back. Matt Nelson drops back in the pocket, and then the pass rusher switches ways, and he's able to pressure Teddy Bridgewater. He's able to get him out of the pocket, and of course, force the incompletion based off of the pressure. Another one right here, right? Matt Nelson right here at the top facing kind of more of the speed finesse rusher, and he's able to get around Matt Nelson. Now, Teddy Bridgewater does a good job getting this football out, but if he doesn't, that is a sack going against Teddy B. Right here, we talk about Matt Nelson being a strong football player, and he is, but right here, Yatura Gross Matos, number 97, is able to push him right back into the pocket and is able to create some contact versus Teddy Bridgewater. Now, I think that Matt Nelson is a better run blocker than he is a pass blocker. He is not a bad pass blocker, but I do think he is a little bit more impactful in the running game, as you're going to see in some of these clips. And he just really is able to get off the ball. He's able to get downfield, right? He's right here at the left tackle position on this first run of the game. And you're going to see he's able to kind of push players down, set the edge, and he's able to not give up any ground, allowing Craig Reynolds to bounce it to the outside and, you know, pick up a good not first down, but a good chunk on first down run. Now, again, right here, Matt Nelson is right here. He's going to work his way up to the linebacker in the second level, and he's going to completely wall him outside. That is a great run blocking rep, and that's exactly what we need to see from our offensive linemen if they come into the game. Right here, again, he's able to kind of cut off the block. He's able to hold Gross Matos to the outside, and he's not allowing him to get anywhere near the running back or the quarterback. Now, this, I think, is Matt Nelson's best play of the day in Carolina. This is going to be the touchdown by Craig Reynolds. You can see him right here working against the defensive lineman, and he and the right guard are just going to completely push everybody into each other, or they're going to open up a massive gap, and Craig Reynolds is going to be able to just walk, pretty much walk, right into the end zone untouched. A really good rep by Matt Nelson and a really good rep by the left guard as well. Now this one, he does get beat with the speed. Again, speed rushers really are his problem, even on run blocking downs, right? You can see right here, he needs to get out there. He needs to get a little wider and your Gross Matos is able to get around. Doesn't quite make the play, but that is still not a great play by Matt Nelson. Gives up the, not the pressure obviously, because it's the running back, but is forcing Craig Reynolds to cut back a little sooner. And if he was able to block that a little better, probably not a touchdown, but it could have been a bigger play. And he did get beat to the edge with some speed. Now, let's take a look at number 76, Connor Galvin, the undrafted rookie free agent from the University of Baylor, a player that has played really good in all three games, and a player that last night I thought outperformed Matt Nelson. Now, as you can see him right here, the first rep of his night is going against the left end for the Panthers, and he does a really good job. He gives up zero ground, gets nowhere near the quarterback, and is able to just kind of stonewall him for a really good block. Now, Connor Galvin is six foot seven. He is a big player, and he plays like he is a long wingspan, and he is able to really anchor down and use his size to his advantage against some smaller edge rushers. Again, right here, perfect pass blocking rep. Gets nowhere near the quarterback, is able to let the quarterback get the ball out, and of course, has a really good pass blocking rep. Again, right here, not anywhere near the quarterback. Does he get pushed back a little bit? Yes, but a rep where your quarterback does not get hit is a winning rep for you as an offensive lineman. If there's no penalty and your quarterback doesn't get touched, that is a really good rep, and that's what Connor Galvin continues to do in the preseason. Right here, this is a very impressive play to me, right? Connor Galvin right here at the left tackle is going to go up against this pass rusher, or I believe maybe even safety that is blitzing off the edge. Now, this is a big gap for Connor Galvin to cover. This is a very deep set, a very deep drop that Connor Galvin has to get to, but he does. He look, makes it look pretty effortless, actually. And even though he kind of has to create a lot of ground, he has to make up a lot of ground on this blitzing defensive back, he does. He gets in the way, he blocks, and he's not allowing the pressure on Teddy Bridgewater. Now, the interior does give up a pressure here, and that is why Teddy Bridgewater, or I believe even Nate Sudfeld at this point, does have to roll out of the pocket. But Nate Sudfeld does not escape because Connor Galvin gave up the pressure. He escapes because the center and right guard 
gave up the pressure. And that is why Teddy, Bur or that is why Nate Sudfeld has to escape out of the pocket. Unfortunately, the play where Nate Sudfeld does get hurt, but that is not on Connor Galvin. He had a very nice play there and did, did keep him clean. Now, right here, this rep, Connor Galvin lost, right? This is one of those reps that comes with experience. This is one of those things that you're going to see out of an undrafted rookie free agent. And there's a reason that he went undrafted, right? There's a reason that he was a UDFA, but I don't think that this is necessarily a, a thing to be concerned about, right? This is a reps thing. It looks to me as though Connor Galvin immediately in this rep doesn't quite know who to block, right? We kind of start off this rep with two guys. And it looks to me like Connor Galvin kind of has a second guessing moment where he doesn't know if he's supposed to put out this guy and try to block him and have this guy have the farthest path to the quarterback, or if he's supposed to take the more dangerous edge rusher and let the running back take the smaller blitzing defensive back. He kind of has his arm out to block this guy, but sets more to block this guy. I think he gets caught in the middle trying to do both and ends up not really doing either, right? The running back is able to cut block the defensive back, but Connor Galvin isn't quite far enough in his pass blocking set to be effective in the pass block and does end up tripping falling and creating some pressure for adrian martinez luckily for connor galvin adrian martinez is athletic enough to escape but again that's a that's a reps thing right that is a hey what do you do in this situation in a live game and i think that you know he has to take the edge rusher let the running back take the smaller guy but he can't get caught in the middle there because that's going to cause pressure and that's going to cause problems however he does make up for it on the very next pass blocking rep, right? This is a stunt by the Carolina Panthers where this guy and this guy are going to switch spots. And you can see Connor Galvin starts by blocking this man. And then when the edge rusher comes around, he's able to kind of switch off and he's able to pass protect and do a really good job keeping Adrian Martinez clean in the pocket and show the ability to switch off. He showed the ability to communicate and kind of make the right decision. And I think that was a really good play by him. This play, I just thought was kind of funny. Connor Galvin does a really good job on this play, but I do find it really funny that the right or the left guard right here decides to go triple team this defensive tackle as opposed to double team with Connor Galvin. I just thought that was kind of a funny decision by the right guard or the left guard, but Connor Galvin absolutely takes his man out of the play, doesn't allow him to get anywhere near the quarterback. And just an overall really good play. But again, I thought the decision by the left guard was an interesting one. Another one right here, Connor Galvin has to get pretty deep pretty quickly. Right, Connor Galvin right here does have to get very wide as edge rusher is taking a wide rush to the quarterback, but he does. He gets all the way out there. He's able to get his hands on him. And, you know, even though he does cut back in the middle, he delays the guy enough where, you know, Adrian Martinez is nowhere near getting hit. Another good rush here, right? Not a perfect set, but again, the quarterback doesn't get hit and he is able to keep the QB clean. He only really lost one pass block rep, and that was the one that I showed where he kind of second-guessed who to block and who to go after. But other than that, he looked really good. I think only allowed one pressure on the quarterback and no QB hits. He was, I believe, the highest-graded offensive lineman of the Detroit Lions in Week 3, as well as Week 1 of the preseason. And he's just a really, really good player. Uh, Connor Galvin, again, right here, he and the other offensive line are going to get a lot of push here. The right side of the offensive line, again, doesn't quite hold up their end of the bargain, but Connor Galvin does end up pushing their linebacker, their defensive end, about five, six yards down the field with the left guard, and they made a really good duo in the run blocking game. Right here again, just a really good start to the play, right? He blocks this guy. He drops off to cover the running back, but Connor Galvin doesn't stand there. He's looking for guys to block. He chips this guy as Adrian Martinez comes around. He's looking, making sure nobody gets close to his quarterback. And I really like that he's looking for blocks, right? The old saying is pass blocking is not passive. And that is what Connor Galvin took to heart. Now, this ended up being a pass play, but I think he blocked it more like a run play where, you know, he kind of started off. He's looking for more players to block and obviously blocks for Adrian Martinez as he escapes the pocket. Just a really good play, heads up awareness, looking for guys to block, looking to be an impact player. And those are the qualities that you want in an offensive lineman. Again, he's standing up here at the left tackle position. This play is not his best, right? He comes around as the pulling tackle. And I think he's looking for guys to block, but he ends up not being super impactful. He passes off 47, which Divine Zigbo eventually breaks. And then he goes to block 37, but he kind of ducks under him. doesn't really impact it a whole lot and ends up not necessarily having the biggest play that was possible on that drive. But wasn't a bad play, right? Connor Galvin is a six foot seven offensive tackle. This guy 
is probably 6'2 at the biggest. He probably has 100 pounds on this defensive back. He doesn't need to lay him out. He just needs to get in the way, right? Make sure that 37 can't duck under his block, and he's pushing that guy all the way past the first down mark. I think he tries to put him on the ground. He tries to kind of make a bigger block than he needs to and ends up whiffing a little bit while 37 works his way back into the play and is able to, you know, eventually joint tackle with 39. Not an awful play by Connor Galvin, but I think that he just needs to realize that he's a big guy in the NFL and he doesn't need to be a devastating run blocker to be an effective run blocker. Now, this last play, this last rushing play for the Detroit Lions is, uh, you know, just a really good one. Again, Connor Galvin is able to set the edge. I think Divine Zigbo was supposed to go inside. That's kind of how it looks like Connor Galvin is supposed to be blocking it. He's kind of setting the edge, making sure that guy doesn't get inside. But again, the left guard gets beat. Number 47 here is in the hole to make a play. So he grounds it outside. Connor Galvin still has the ability to kind of hold this guy. His guy does end up making the tackle, but it is a few yards past the line of scrimmage. And of course, it doesn't end up being anything too bad for him. So with that being said, I think both offensive tackles played very well in week three. I think that Matt Nelson improved a lot throughout the preseason from his first game to his last. I think Connor Galvin, for the most part in all three games, played very, very strong. Now, I think Connor Galvin outplayed Matt Nelson in the preseason. I really, really do. I think that he was a better pass blocker. I think he was maybe not a better run blocker, but he was still a very effective run blocker. And it's, I think, going to be very hard for the Detroit Lions to look at what Connor Galvin did and say, we don't want that guy on the football team. The problem being, I don't know if Matt Nelson did enough in the preseason to lose his job, right? The Lions have this big thing with loyalty. They have this big thing with, hey, if you've been here for a couple of years, you're going to have the edge up. And if the battle's close, we're going to give it to the guy that's been here for the longest, right? That's what they did with their long snapper. That's what they do with their receivers. That's what they do with their running backs. That's why Jamar Jefferson is still on the roster for the most part and why a couple other depth players are still here like Will Harris, right? If the battle's close, we're giving it to the veteran, and I think that might end up being Connor Galvin's eventual downfall. Not because I think Connor Galvin necessarily deserves to be cut, but I think there is a chance that they try to storm on the practice squad. I think there's a chance that he's going to replace an upgrade over a Benny Aziz, but I don't know if he's going to make it through waivers. He played very well in the preseason. I know he's not a big name. I know he's not a flashy player, but somebody around the NFL is going to notice number 76. And if the Lions do end up waving him, even if they intend to bring him back to the practice squad, I think it's going to be very, very tight and very stressful for the first couple hours, first 24 hours of being cut before they bring Connor Galvin to the practice squad. I think he's a very good player. I think he should end up making this roster even over Matt Nelson, but due to the kind of just veteran status Matt Nelson has, I think there could be a chance that he ends up making the roster and Connor Galvin gets pushed to the practice squad. But with all that being said, that is all I have for you guys today. The Lions offensive line depth, despite what most people are saying, isn't as bad as a lot of people think. Connor Galvin played well. Jermaine Fetty played well. Matt Nelson played well. Corby Sorsdale had some up and down reps, but he, overall, I think in the preseason, he played very well. And of course, your starting six offensive linemen didn't end up playing or making an impact in the preseason because they never saw the field. So, with that being said, I think the Lions have some of the best offensive line depth in the NFL. Not that that says a whole lot, because obviously nobody in the NFL right now seems to have offensive line depth, but I do think they have good tackle depth. I do think they have good guard depth. I do think they are a very strong offensive line, even as a second string unit. So with that being said, that is kind of the battle between Connor Galvin and Matt Nelson. That is kind of a breakdown of your offensive line depth on the edges. And I do think that one, if not both, could end up making the roster and certainly both deserve to be Detroit Lions for the future. But with that being said, it's like after you guys today, if you made it this far into the video about offensive line blocking and offensive line battles, clearly you enjoyed the Detroit Lions. So go down below, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell notification so you never miss a Detroit Lions upload. But with that being said, with that being said, that is all I have for you guys today. Thank you all so very much for watching. And until next time, and as always, go Lions!